Hello there and a very good evening and welcome along to the Half Yard Sewing Club Facebook live session in my sewing room, in my home. So it's lovely to have your company this evening. Um, now for those of you that are brand new to the Half Yard Sewing Club, and I know there's going to be a lot of you watching, um, I'm going to explain a little bit about the club and the way that it works. I want to thank all of those many hundreds of members that have already joined up. And I have got a list of some of your questions as well, so I'm going to answer those very, very shortly. But for the newbies out there, um, Half Yard Sewing Club is a club that's available to anybody and everybody worldwide. Um, it's something that myself and my publisher Search Press have been working on for around about a year now and it's something that already we're very very proud of. It's interactive, you can join in like we do the Facebook sessions here. You're going to be receiving projects every single month. There's, there's pages uh, on the website where um, you're going to be able to access tips and techniques and lots of information and instruction so it's so much more than just subscribing and getting a free project every month so I hope you're going to enjoy it and I hope you're going to become very involved in this as well um, I want to say hello. oh hi Alan Patchwork hi to you and Angie and Sabashini I hope I've got that right and Angie again if you have got any comments I know there's going to be lots of you watching so I'll keep looking over and, and try and get through as many of those as I possibly can so questions. Um, we've had loads come through, so we've shortened them down um, to these ones. So Karen, the, oh, these are all questions from members, by the way. When you are a member, there's um, a, a, a place on the website on the right-hand side of your screen where you can, you can send me a question. And the reason we do it that way is so that if there's any questions come through where I need to prepare something or demonstrate something, I've got lots of time to be able to do that instead of just instantly answering questions that come along as we're live. Um, so, for instance, Karen has the following question. She said, what type and weight is the best wadding to use for the craft caddy? Now, there is in the technique section on the, uh, the Sewing Club website um, a whole video all about waddings, interfacing, stabilizers, battings, what the difference is and how to choose the best ones. But this is the craft caddy. This is, this is my dog's toothbrush, and I, I don't know why it's here. If you've seen Bobbin before, you'll hear her because she's chomping away like crazy, and she's got a whole load of chews to keep her busy so she's not interfering with what we do. But you know that's going to go wrong, so that's, I'll give her that in a minute. This is the craft caddy, um, which was the first project for you. So you had the step-by-step um, -step instructions, downloadable, printable patterns, um, measurements, and you have a video to show you how to make this. And Karen's question is the best wadding to use. Now, it depends how you want your bag to feel. This one's quite soft, and I've used um, a fusible fleece, which is a polyester wadding, or batting, depending on where you're from, um, which irons onto the back of your fabric. If you wanted your bag to be a little bit more sturdy, you can use a more solid interfacing, a firmer interfacing. You could use something like Decaville, excuse me, which is another question that we've got coming up, which is quite stiff. Or you could use a foam stabiliser, which, I know this isn't the craft caddy, uh, this is from So Baby, but that gives you a nice firm feel as well. The best thing you can do actually with waddings and interfacings and that kind of thing is to actually go to a store um, and feel them. And basically that's how your bag is going to feel. So if you want it quite floppy, you can choose one that's floppy. If you want something that's firmer, just choose one that feels firmer. So that's probably going to be the easiest way to go. Oh, what else have we got? Nobody. It's just us. Well, there's 62 of you as well watching, you're just not commenting, that's fine. Um, if you do want to, then come on through, I'll keep picking up your, your messages here. Uh, Olivia says, what is the longest and most challenging project you have ever done? Do you know, I was thinking about this. When I was working at um, Create and Craft, which for those of you that are watching from countries afar, you may not know, is a shopping channel where we sell um, crafting products. Um, one of the floor managers asked me to make a drum kit cover. I said yes. It took me weeks. He had a, a, basically it, there were three drums. So there's a big one. I don't know what it's called, um, and two smaller ones. And he wanted them sturdy with a zip all the way around the top, um, in a black canvas with a faux sheepskin lining, and then yellow piping around them because that was the colour black and yellow that 
his band, um, and then really strong straps. So I, I ended up making these huge drum kit bags uh, with the straps that were made out of seatbelt fabric because it was the only thing I could find that was so stiff. Um, I got through quite a few sewing machine needles with that one. And it's one of those things that, you know, he, he said thank you, which was really nice, but it was a week's work. So I've learned to say, I'm a bit busy to things like that now, but I think that was the most challenging thing because I didn't, I didn't really know what I was doing with them. Nice thing was that he appreciated it and it was awful lot more affordable for him than it would have been to go and, and buy these things which are apparently hundreds of pounds. Um, right, Dawn says, hi Debbie, hi Dawn. Um, I love the fabrics you use. Could you give us an idea of your favourite manufacturers and how you choose the combinations, please? Um, I use a lot of fabric from the Craft Cotton Company. They um, don't sell to the public, but they do supply places like Hobbycraft, like Inspirations in Preston. Um, I, a, a combinations with, that's really difficult, isn't it? Because there's so, so many fabrics. If you go for um, fat quarter packs and, and pre-cut fabrics, the manufacturers tend to put together colour combinations that work. So that makes it really easy. Um, otherwise, when you take a look online on a lot of um, stores, they put together colour groups of fabrics. So again, you know that they're going to work. But it depends what I'm making, really. Sometimes I think I'd, I'd like something really rich. I'd like purples and jade colours, but then it looks a bit overpowering because the colours are too much. So I may dilute that down with something a little bit more pastel. Basically, I've got a big stash of fabric and I'll put things together and see what works. And most of the time it seems to, so that's great. Um, right. Uh, half Yard Club member, Sue Carrier. Hello, Sue Carrier. She has the following question. Do you recommend using Decaville for bag making and have you any tips for sewing it? This is Decaville. It's, um, it does come in different weights and Decaville's a brand name. There are different brands and it's um, a fusible interfacing, but it feels like leather. It's a really tough um, interfacing and it's got a shiny side to it, which is adhesive. So you iron that onto the back of your fabric and it, it makes it quite stiff. Um, the only thing I'd say with it, maybe use a denim needle, which is a stronger needle to cope with the thickness. And I'd use it on larger projects because it can, when you're trying to turn something inside out, it's a bit like trying to turn cardboard. But I do like the look of it. In fact, I have a bag to show you that's been made with quite a heavy weight of Decaville. This is from Half Your Bags and Purses. And I like the look. It gives a really kind of firm, crisp, sharp look to your bag rather than the, the softer look that you get with a fusible interfacing. And there is nothing wrong in mixing and matching like I have with the satchel. So with the satchel, the flap, which is one piece that goes all the way around the back, has the fusible Decaville on the back of it. but all of the pockets and the, the front and everything has got um, a fusible fleece. So it's a combination of the two together. Oh, you like that? That's one of your projects in a few months time. Yes, we to be doing all sorts. All uh, right. Take a bit. Jill Smith, hello Jill Smith, says, is it possible to sew a four hole button using the button foot on my sewing machine? She's only done two hole buttons before. Yeah, do you know, funny thing is, with standard buttons that you buy, the holes are the same distance apart. And that's the same whether it's a big button, a small button, a four-hole button, or a two-hole button. You, you can kind of get fancy buttons, and they're a little bit different, and they're different sizes, but basically they're all the same. So all you're going to do with your button is to place it underneath um, the foot, Turn your hand wheel on your sewing machine so that the needle goes from one side to another. Make sure the needle's not going to hit the button and then you can use your foot and that'll go quicker. Then lift the, press the foot up, move the button again until the second two holes are underneath the machine and you do the same again. So yes, you can with your sewing machine really easily. Just make sure again that you turn the hand wheel towards you to make sure the needle's not going to break on the side of your foot. I've got loads of questions. I just wasn't scrolling down. Where's well, my first? It's my first time. Uh, Penny, hi. Jane Moore, hi. And Martin Willis, hello. And Anne Bentley, hi. Margaret Garlic and Anne. Oh, hello, Anne again. Alan again, sorry. 
Danny Phillips. <laughs> Mary Del Hi, Mary. Your books are in the post. Uh, Martin Willis and Polly. Oh, hi, Debs. You're in my kitchen cooking with me while I'm chatting. What are we making? A fancy, a fancy, a, a, a curry, actually, Polly. Are we doing curry? Monkfish. That'd be nice. Thank you very much. Um, Leah says, loves Bobby, and she's, she's gone now. Um, Robin, hi, Debbie, Denise. Oh, gosh, there's loads of you. Should have scrolled earlier, shouldn't I? Uh, Dave Shaw and Sylvia and Christine Turton. I love watching you create great bags. Thank you very much. And Phyllis and Glenn. Hello. And Maggie and Lorraine and Anne Bentley, um, who's too busy watching Debbie to post. Oops. Um, and Marina from Portugal. Hello. Oh, tell me where you are. What? Not not you, Marina, because I know you're in Portugal. Um, do we have anybody from the States? Good morning. Good morning. Good early afternoon to you. Do we have anybody in Australia? Where in the world are you? Come and let me know. Oh, hi, Bob. Come in. Come in. Come in. Come in. Come say hello. Come say hello. Here she is. Here. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. No room. Come on. Up, 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 up. There she is. She's a bit, a bit big. There you go. Right. Um, and Denise, what are the best things to make out of fat quarters? Bags. And bags and bags and more bags. Um, Mandy's got my bag books. Well done. Can't wait for them to come. And Lorraine's straw. Is it similar to Bosal? Should have kept it with it, shouldn't I? The... I presume we're talking about the Decaville. No, it feels like leather. Both of those actually like um, a sponge. So it, it is very different. Uh, Teresa, hello. I'm Bentley, hello. Can you design a man bag? I've been asked a few times for a man bag and I have to do that, aren't I? Yes, I will design a man bag. Angela, hello. And Deborah, hello. And Sue, hello. And Anne, hello. And Sue, hello. And Natia, hello. And Linda, and Deborah, and Judith, and Dawn, and Alan again, and Linda, and Polly, and Carol, and Angie. Whew. It's quite exciting, isn't it? I've never done one of these before. Um, Penny Robertson was asking about which needles and threads are the best one to use. I don't know whether you were talking about um, sewing machine needles or hand sewing needles. This is something that I'm going to cover in more depth on the um, Harvey Our Sewing Club website. I'll put a, a techniques and hints and tips page together on this because I'm asked it's quite a lot. With sewing machines, just briefly, most sewing machines will take universal needles. So if you're not sure which needle to use for your fabric, then universal is a good option to, do, to go for. If you're sewing through very thick fabric um, or things like denim or multiple layers of fabric, then use a denim needle. A denim needle comes in different sizes, very much like a standard needle would do, but they're stronger. So they're built to go through thicker layers of fabric. If you're sewing through um, stretch fabric, then use a ballpoint or a stretch needle. They've got slightly rounded tips. So instead of piercing, because a stretch fabric's knitted, instead of piercing through the strands of the fabric, which could ladder it, it parts them. And you will get a much nicer stitch when you're sewing stretch fabric with a ballpoint needle. If you're sewing leather, use a leather needle because they're like a chisel shape and it helps the, the leather to, to seal around the stitch afterwards. So always the right needle for your fabric. Um, Thread-wise, I like Gutterman. I use most of all. I like Metla. Um, spend a bit of money on your thread. You'll tend to find that um, cheaper threads are very fibrous and they're not very strong. So, you know, you've taken all that time, you, you spent your money on your sewing machine, you've taken all of that time to prepare your work, you've bought your fabric, don't let your thread let you down, use, a, use an expensive thread. Hand sewing needles, I like shops for anything. I know you should use quilting needles or betweens with your quilting and, and so on and so forth, but I like to use shops for everything. And they do come in different sizes, normally the smaller the number, the longer the needle. So shops number nine are my favourite hand sewing needles. Um, Maggie says, I love your video instructions. I think I must have watched all of them. There's about 150. That's kept you going a while. Um, it's the tips I found most useful. She says, um, can I say, of course I can. I'm 62, been sewing since I was 10, but I've learned so much from your videos. Thank you. And then Roger says, can you design a travel bag for lingerie? 
little drawstring bag would be nice for that, wouldn't it? We could do that, Roger. Uh, Deborah says, hi from Pauline Dorset. Hello, Pauline Dorset. Um, Lynn is from Missouri in the USFA. So you are... Are you one o'clock in the afternoon over there? Welcome along. Uh, Leslie, hello. Hello, Ruth Mill. Um, Renate is from Chichester. Hi, Renate. Jackie, uh, hello to you. Alison Thomas from Barnaby. Sorry, I'm doing something very strange with this screen. Everything's disappearing. Um, and hi, Karen, as well. We're worldwide. Um, Louise Hort, uh, sorry, Louise Hogbin, who is um, a member. She's one of the testers from the site as well, actually. She'd like some tips on making bag handles easier. Uh, that's another one, Louise, that I'm going to be doing on um, on the site itself. That we're going to do a bag of the month because so many of you love making bags. So all of the projects every month are going to be very different. There's going to be lots of different techniques. We're going to do quilting. We're going to be doing dressmaking. But every month, either as a main project or as one of the, the bonus projects that members receive, there will be a bag. So yes, you will have lots of bag hints and tips and fitting hardware and fastenings. And I'll make sure that tan bag straps are on there as well. In fact, I might even do you a video to make that a little bit easier. Um, oh, and then Diane Cross, she's a member as well. Hi, Diane. Says, please could I ask how to use your notebook? I've looked at it, but I don't know how to know add, how to add. I just can't talk. How to add notes to it, or what kind of notes I should make in there? Says, Thank you, um, Diane. When you when you look at any of the projects on the website, you'll have an option to write notes. And they're for you. They're your own personal notes. So, for instance, if you, you're thinking of making a pumpkin, which is one of next month's bonus projects, um, maybe you found a, a, a favourite store that's got the exact fabric that you want. You can write a note at the side of the project saying, oh, I've found some fantastic f fabric here. Or I'll, I'll give you instructions on how to make lots of different sizes. Maybe you want a bigger one. Maybe you want to make a poof. Um, make the note at the side there. And then you can store all of those notes. And when you go back into, um, it says your notebook at the top of the page, click on there and up the page will come with the project that you're looking at and all the notes that you've made. So that's personally for you to make your own notes about any of the projects that are on there. I, I can't see that. We're not going to share it. You can write whatever you like. That's your own personal use. Now then, we were going to have a look. Oh, hi, Dawn. Oh, Dawn's replying to Maggie disappearing to the top of my page for some reason. Um, replying to Sue and Karen. Oh, Karen's loving the Half Yard Sewing Club and hopes to make the Craft Caddy bag very soon. Thank you, Karen. Um, Jenny says, where do you go for your faux leather? Um, I'm a bit stuck on faux leather at the moment. I, I do have details for the suppliers, so I'm going to get in touch with them and ask where they distribute to around the UK. Um, I'm not a member of the club yet, says Lorraine, but are the videos available all the time or just for a limited time, please? They're available for 12 months. So, for instance, if you join now, you're going to receive the... Um, the craft caddy and there are other projects on there as well there's um, uh, a cushion cover and there is another bag um, you'll be able to hold on to those for 12 months after joining um, and you'll have a video every month as well for the main project um, a, cl a complete novice is sue gregson will she be able to make the bags i've designed them for you of course you can i like to keep everything very very simple um, as in my explanation of things, very, very simple. 
Um, so something like the first project that you're going to get here, you've got a video with this. You can follow along sewing with me, stop and start. As I'm talking throughout the video, you get all of the hints and the tips because I don't tend to shut up. Um, and you've got your written instructions. And of course, if you do get into any kind of difficulty, you can contact me. You can drop me an email and in one of these live sessions, I'll be answering those kind of questions for you. So yes, absolutely, if you are a beginner, welcome along and let's get you sewing. Um, I don't know if I said to you. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Karen from Sunderland. Not a member yet, but will be shortly. Welcome along. Jane says hi. Karen says hi. Alan again. Oh, hi, Alan again. Anne says hi. And Lady Louise, love the fabric sewing machine behind you. Will this be a project? You like this? I think you like that. Oh yeah, it's a project. Um, is that November, Kim? Sorry. There's a list in front of you. Yeah. November, one of November's projects. It's a huge sewing machine pincushion. I knew you'd like that one, so yes, that, all of these are projects. Go and have a look. Um, next month, oh, this is something to mention as well, because we, we launched the club on the 14th, which is halfway through the month. So everyone's paid for their subscriptions for the first month, halfway through the month. Your next one comes out on the 1st of September, so you're kind of getting two months before your next payment comes out. <laughs> How's that? Oh, where's my rabbit gone? Here we go. This is next month. So this is your bag of the month. It's a bunny. But when you undo the drawstring... Oh, your lingerie bag, Roger. How about a bunny lingerie bag? Keep your rabbit in. Look. So you can keep things in there like that and draw it up or you could just fill it full of stuffing and have it as a toy um, and it doesn't just have to be a rabbit on the pattern. My rabbit lies lost in here. Oh no, Bobbin! <laughs> oh, Bobbin! Oh no! Oh, I'm so sorry. There will be, <laughs> there will be <laughs> on your pattern mouse ears as well, so you could make it into a mouse. See, she comes in, she nicks me rabbit, she chews its ear off, and she leaves. Toothbrush in mouth. That red one up there as well. Look. <laughs> yeah. So that's going to be one of next <laughs> month's project. Um, as it's coming up to Halloween, the pumpkin is going to be in next month as well. I, I wanted to do something that's Halloween but not overtly, you know, scary witches, monsters, all that kind of thing. So I think these are really classy, like with the, um, with the flowers and the beads on there. And you can make them in different sizes, so it could be... You may well bark, you rabbit ear, pinch of you. Just say, huh? So they could just be ornaments, or you could actually make them purposeful as well. Look at what you did. Look. Look, rabbit. No ear. You did that. You did that. There's no point in sitting. You're not getting it back. No. Showing me up and making a fool of me. What else have we got? Um, there's... Nah. <laughs> rabbit is temptation. Um, different um, techniques you're going to learn as well. So the rainbow cushion there is a very simple Bargello type of thing. Um, the quilted cushion here is actually, your project is going to be a quilt, which is this. And it's like a very simple flying geese technique. But because I give you the step-by-step -step instructions for a quilt, I want to give you some value for money. So you can use the same technique and make that into a cushion cover as well. So it, maybe it's learning something for you, but giving you some ideas. Um, there's an advent calendar behind me, which I think is... Is that November? Is that advent calendar? Or is it October? Um, Can't remember. Coming up later this year... You'll have the advent calendar with either a robin or snowman applique. But again, I'll give you some ideas as to how you can use that as well, because you can use the applique, obviously. October! October! 
you can use the applique for different things as well. Birthday bear is one of the, the, the you're not having the rabbit, you're not, um, is one of the projects as well. The satchel is going to be one of your projects. The little homeware bits and bobs here. Would you like to play with the cafeteria? What's the rabbit? Um, and whoops. There's oven mitts, you've got a tea cosy, you've got a mug hug. It, it's not just about the projects that you're making here, it's learning about free motion embroidery and applique and creating different things like this. So again, although we've got lots of kind of diverse different types of projects coming up, it's what you can learn from them and how you can adapt the different techniques to make different things with. You're not having the rabbit's ear, okay? No, no matter how nice you are, you're not having those, no. And you've had all you choose, haven't you? I know, I know, it's no point in saying you're sorry now. You've eaten it. And that's the end of it. You can say hello to everybody. <laughs> Go on. So, Debbie, I'm waiting for my celebration bikes to arrive on Amazon next week. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bobbin is a naughty dog. I've got two cats as well. I've got three cats. We did have two cats. And then we had Thomas adopt us. He just turned up one day uh, and never went away. We did um, check if he was um, chipped, and he was. Uh, got in touch with his owners, and they'd moved house, apparently. And uh, they actually said if, that he seemed so happy here, could he stay? Welcome to Chateau Shaw. This isn't even the postman. I've, I've no idea what's happening outside, but she's obviously not very happy. She's getting big, isn't she? It's funny, I was looking at some, um, some old pictures earlier on with, with Kim, my daughter, and she said, oh, look at that one again. She's tiny on there. But she's getting to be a very big girl. Go on. Go on. Go on. Go bock at your dad. Bock at her dad. Uh, oh, thank you, Cynthia. And Tracy says, hi, Debbie. Um, bias binding is an issue for Jenny Harry. Oh, hi, Jenny. Um, I can never get it to look good. And she says, hi. I'm not saying the B word because she'll come running back in and try and eat, eat my samples again. Um, bias binding is something in the technique section on the, um, on the Half Yard Sewing Club. Uh, and we'll try and get a video on that as well. Tracy says hi. Lorraine says thank you. H Y S C. Oh yeah. And Dawn says very excited about the quilting projects I've just started, and I'm sewing a border around my first quilting attempt. And Leah Louise says love birthday bear, hoping to make for my son's birthday in October. It's quite cute, isn't it? <laughs> With his party hat on. I, thought, I just thought he was a little bit silly. But again, even if this is something you thought, I don't really want to make that this month, there are going to be other projects on there as well. And with Birthday Bear, I kind of fancy using the template to actually make some bunting out of and have Birthday Bear bun. Birthday Bear bunting as well. There you go. It's got a chew down here now. Uh, lovely, where are we? Oh, 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 oh. Ooh. oh I, I just went all big. I could probably have done that beforehand. Um, 4.30 a.m. here in Australia, says Marietta. Hello, Marietta. Did you get up specially just to see us? She says, um, such a nice surprise. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, gosh, you're all over the place, aren't you? There's Rosa and Geraint. Ger That's a lovely name. Um, Jenny says, can you use your new fabric for that? Was that the bias binding? Absolutely. Or oh, the bear would look fantastic. Uh, Marina and Attractor McKinley. What a lovely name you have. Anne-Marie Baker and Kathy and Sabina and Debron Jones. Hello. And Sue Gregson, where do I get wadding from? Most of your fabric store should be able to supply you with wadding. Uh, Phyllis Smith, hello, ear, ear, bobbin is, ear, ear, bobbin is gorgeous, she says. Um, oh, gosh, there's so many of you here. That's so nice of you to come along. Look at everybody. Anne-Marie, but, oh. Uh, Mary Bennett <coughs> loves the bear as well. Two new babies in the family would make lovely presents. Oh, congratulations. And Angie... 
Nana, can you make it? Uh, Mary says, love the bear. I've got two new bears. Oh, I've just read that one, haven't I? Oh. Do you know, I, uh, thank you. Oh, I'm Mexico. Fabiola. Hello. Hello to Mexico. Wow. Love the project. Thank you very much. Oh, God. Do you know, this, it, it's so exciting and it's quite surreal to be sitting here talking to people from all over the world. Um, so from Australia and the States and Portugal and, um, and Mexico. I just think it's... Uh, thank you so much. I'm absolutely overwhelmed. Um, well, I thought I'd be here for half an hour, so we're, we're just about out of time. There will be another Facebook Live in a month's time. Um, do send through all of your questions if you are a Half Yard Club, a Half Yard Sound Club member already. You'll see the, um, the the page or the area on the website to actually fill in at any time you like because we store all the questions up just before. Uh, Lynn says, can't wait to get your new books. Thank you. Emily says, trying to sign up. Hang on, I've lost you. Trying to sign up to the club, but it keeps coming up with an error. I'm not sure what to do. Emily, you're going to have either Caroline or Olivia get in touch with you very shortly. Um, or you can um, drop them an email. It's halfyardsewingclub.com. Olivia or Caroline, I'll, I'll answer your question very shortly, I'm sure. I can't wait to get Oh, thank you. Oh, Ali from California. <laughs> Wow, uh, Marina, I'm in love with a bunny, he said. And Alan Patchwork, a quilt master, Reno, is in um, Tameside in Manchester. Alison says, I, could you do a hot water bottle cover, please? My little grandchildren would love their little bot bottles, bot <laughs> bottles covered. Um, yep, that's on the list. Thank you. And says, loved your chat tonight. Thank you. Uh, Cynthia signed up last week. There you go, Emily. You've got your... Uh, reply there if you've had trouble signing in and I don't want to go my dinner's cooking and everything but I'm quite happy staying there thank you for the same club says Lynn thank you oh Anne's found it um, Dawn says thank you David loved it and Bernadette from Goa in India wow my son was out there on holiday earlier on in the year um, Ali hello to you too Look, I'm, I'm going to have to go because I'm keeping you up all night, aren't I? So, come and join me in the Half Yard Sewing Club. If you are new, all of the details are there on the website. Take a look at halfyardsewingclub.com. Um, we do have a Half Yard Sewing Club Facebook page so that you can keep up with everything that we're doing. If you haven't joined yet and you just want a little bit more information or you want to see how things go, that is absolutely fine. I'm going to be here again in a month's time. I will be posting the exact date that I'm going to be with you when I can remember when it is. Um, it'll be about this time next month. Um, your next sewing projects are going to be released on the 1st of September. So I want lots of pictures to see what you've been making. If you have any requests, we've had quite a few tonight. Will you be signing any books for the club? Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's gonna be happening soon. Keep looking out on the club. I've actually signed a couple of hundred for you already. So I don't know if I should tell you that, but they will be available very soon. Linda's in Greece. Hello, I told you that would be coming be here all night. Um, hello, Linda in Greece. And Lorraine says, thank you for sharing your evening. I've had an absolute ball. Thank you. Thank you, Mandy, um, who's typing the replies. We are a team. Um, there's myself, um, my daughter, Kimberly. Daughter Kimberly is here and uh, she helps me with all technical stuff because I'm an old bird these days. Um, husband, Gary, is cooking the dinner and he's the one that sets up all the cameras and the lighting because he's the photographer and he's the technical guy. Um, there, there's also Olivia and Caroline from Search Press who are all part of the whole the whole reason for the Half Yard Club, Sewing Club being here. I couldn't do it on my own so there's a team of four or five of us all working together just to make sure that everything is 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 right for you is value for money something that you like and that we can respond to you so quickly like this um so we're we're all waking oh thank you thank you bernadette thank you deborah hi from derbyshire i'm a derby girl myself you probably know that and laura says hello um so yeah we're, we're a very, very small team but we're a very de dedicated team and i'm so glad that you've joined us so far right i'm gonna go now
because I can smell my dinner cooking. My dog wants to go out. My daughter's desperate for a glass of champagne. <laughs> So I shall see you very soon. Keep in touch on Facebook and I shall see you again next month. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you, Martin. I'm going. I'm going.